Welcome everyone to the Global Conversation Series on Social Ecological Systems, which the Social Ecological Systems Institute at Leuphana University hosts several times a year. Our goal with this series is to facilitate exchange on emerging topics in social ecological systems science and practice. My name is Johan Fischer and I co-head um, the Social Ecological Systems Institute together with Berta Martin Lopez. And I'm joined today by three researchers who each grew up in rural landscapes in different parts of the world. William Apollonaire is with us and he grew up in Rwanda. Tibor Hartl is with us, he grew up in Transylvania and Romania. And Gilma Shumi is also with us and he grew up in Oromia and Southwestern Ethiopia. Today's session emerged from conversations among the four of us in which we noticed that the role of traditional ecological knowledge was different in the various different countries and landscapes where we had worked. And these conversations led us to write a research paper together, which is now published in Trends in Ecology and Evolution. And today we'd like to continue this conversation with you. For that, we'll first have um, a little bit of a presentation, which will go for about half an hour. And after the presentation, we will try to have a discussion, including some breakout sessions with all of you here. So traditional ecological knowledge can be defined in many different ways. Um, one definition, this one here, is one that's particularly nice because it puts an emphasis on the interrelations between different things. It is a cumulative body of knowledge, practice, and belief evolving by adaptive processes and handed down through generations by cultural transmission about the relationship of living beings with one another and with the environment. So, Obviously, traditional ecological knowledge is potentially quite useful because it could help us to manage ecosystems in a more sustainable way. And for that reason, for example, the IPBS recognizes that together with local and indigenous knowledge, traditional ecological knowledge could be potentially very valuable um, for the management of ecosystems. At the same time, though, it is, of course, declining in many landscapes, and that's what we're interested to talk about here today. When we look at traditional ecological knowledge from a systems perspective, then it's more than meets the eye. There's more than just what you see on the surface. If you like the knowledge that you can see, the traditional ecological knowledge is just the surface, the superficial level. It's the parameters of the system. Below the parameters, we have different feedbacks and design and intent aspects to traditional ecological knowledge um, that also matter. So let's just go through that a little bit and explain what we mean by this. So at the parameter level, for example, in a traditional ecological system, you might see, ah, look, people know a lot about nature. And that's sort of something that you can somehow measure and it's, it's very easily visible. At a deeper level, there are particular feedbacks that maintain this knowledge. For example, information flows about how people maintain the local knowledge. And there are certain ways here, certain feedbacks between the social and the ecological system. There are design features in systems of traditional ecological knowledge where, for example, particular networks facilitate sustainable land use, but particular social networks or where ecological knowledge through time co-evolves with gradual social change. And all of that is underpinned at a very deep level by things like worldviews or um, values that underpin basically how we ought to interact with the natural world. So this is what we mean by thinking about traditional ecological knowledge at these different levels of depth in a social ecological system sense. Starting off, traditional rural landscapes often have a very vibrant traditional ecological knowledge. People have a lot of knowledge about different aspects to do with nature. They recognize all kinds of different species and so on and so forth. But then as time goes on, Often what happens is that some of that ecological knowledge and of the different mechanisms that maintain this knowledge is lost or erodes. And um, what you see then is that it still sort of looks like it looked before, but actually many people are perhaps already not really sharing the worldviews anymore that used to uphold traditional ecological knowledge. And this is the sort of phase where systems are perhaps quite brittle and traditional ecological knowledge might be lost. It can be lost, for example, in subsistence landscapes. And um, for example, landscapes where a lot of tree clearing has happened, people may no longer know the functions of different trees after a while, even though they are still subsistence farmers and even though they're still working in that same landscape. Alternatively, traditional ecological knowledge can also be lost in industrialized landscapes like we see them 
for example, um, in many of the wealthy nations, like in Germany, for example, where um, we are at the moment. In our paper, we talk about the traditional ecological knowledge conundrum. And we basically ask whether traditional ecological knowledge in some places is maintained because people actually want to maintain it and value it highly, or because they have no other choice but to maintain it because of poverty and because of a lack of options to really um, change, to, to really work with the landscape in a different and perhaps more modern way. So that's what we call the traditional ecological knowledge conundrum. What we like to do now over the next um, few minutes is go through some examples of different states of such uh, social ecological systems. To start with, Gilma will talk to us a little bit about his experiences of working in Ethiopia and um, talking about a system of living traditional ecological knowledge. We'll then have um, William share with us some experiences from Rwanda where Traditional ecological knowledge is currently sort of about here. It's re-emerging after it had been lost in a subsistence-oriented landscape. And after that, TB will take over and talk to us about his experiences in Transylvania, about remnant traditional ecological knowledge. And when we're done with that, we'd like to talk to all of you about some priorities about the future of research and practice regarding traditional ecological knowledge. So with that, I'd like to first of all hand over to Gilma. Yeah, thank you, Yon, and uh, I welcome all of uh, our audience from all over the world. And uh, as you can see, uh, our case study landscape, uh, Gera uh, Agaro landscape is situated in uh, uh, Jimma zone, uh, uh, Oromia regional state in southwestern Ethiopia, which is, uh, they are a part of globally recognized biodiversity hotspot area. They are also center of origin of coffee Arabica and still harbors uh, wild coffee population, which are really uh, naturally uh, decaffeinated coffee uh, uh, species. <clears throat> they are uh, the majority of the population in this landscape are the Oromos. And next slide, please. Um, here, uh, TK is alive and uh, because of this, it enables the local community to favor agroecosystem management or integrated landscape management as than the highly hierarchical and um, top-down uh, agricultural intensification policy of the country. Uh, for this, the community still uh, maintain customary forest use rights, example for, for honey and uh, uh, coffee production in some forests. As, as an addition to uh, uh, the usual uh, uh, subsistence agricultural practices. Next slide. <clears throat> and TK also enables them to know, manage, and use more than 90 different species, three species, for different purposes uh, or ecosystem services across all um, land uses. That means across the landscapes and uh, for instance, they uh, manage uh, 52 species for house construction. They also know uh, uh, and manage 42 species for farm implements, 38 uh, species for uh, fuel wood. And in the same way, they manage uh, <clears throat> 11 species for poles and the timber, that means for extractive uses. So that means, uh, one species can can serve for many purposes, but they know by 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 each uh, uses. Next slides. So with this as an outlook, um, we uh, researchers in that landscape uh, and even the local community signal that possible loss of social ecological uh, resilience can be caused by top down uh, land use intensification policies and for that matter, addressing such kind of problem may need to foster bottom-up changes in a system goal, rules, paradigm, and intent, especially by recognizing local uh, people, their livelihoods, and uh, their traditional or the existing uh, alive TK. 
With this, I will uh, hand uh, or uh, I will transfer uh, the, the session to the my colleague William. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Gilma. Thank you very much for your nice presentation. So, just to give you a quick background of this uh, part of Rwanda, the western part of Rwanda, it's a region um, where um, there has been a lot of. Uh, loss of tree cover, um, particularly uh, between 1930s and, uh, and 2002, um, where, for example, the, the, the Gishwati Mukura have been um, seriously uh, degraded and also deforested. Um, but uh, today, uh, there are ongoing efforts for restoration. And as some of you might know, uh, the Gishwati Mukura which you see in, in the green on the map, um, have been um, gazetted as a national park. Um, and now it has also been uh, gazetted as UNESCO uh, Biosphere Reserve, um, which is a great news. So this is indicative of the restoration efforts going on. Um, also in the surrounding um, ecosystems, there are still ongoing um, restoration uh, efforts. Um, so with the revival of trees, of course, the traditional ecological knowledge is also regaining uh, the surface, um, um, as I'll ex explain later. This is a region where the, the, the poverty is high, almost uh, half of the population is in poverty, and uh, almost uh, like uh, about half of the, that amount is under extreme poverty. The level um, of education is low, only, um, I'll give just a few figures, um, only 63.6% have finished the primary education um, only, and 20.6% uh, have no education. Um, also, it's a region where um, a majority, the majority of the population, the farming population, 79.7% um, uh, are agricultural households, um, practice agriculture as the main livelihood activity. Um, so why was it lost? Um, the traditional ecological knowledge was lost um, mostly because of the conversion of natural lands to agriculture, uh, some of which belong to the natural um, forest, others belonging to some corridors like the stream buffer zones. Um, this disruption of the social fabric also contributed to the loss of traditional uh, ecological knowledge. And the, we have seen the, the shift from the traditional education to Western schooling, where you can see, for example, the curriculum uh, focusing mostly on uh, modern, modernity uh, without integrating the traditional um, knowledge into the curriculum. Uh, you also see uh, the health infrastructure improving uh, gradually and significantly in Rwanda, whereby the need for resorting back to the traditional medicine, for example, is not, uh, doesn't make any sense for some of the Rwanda. But I highlighted this in blue, where I talk about the tech uh, used to be passed from parents to children while working on the farms. Um, then because of the war, especially during the war of 1990, that culminated in the genocide that happened in 1994. Um, most of the elderly people uh, died and without leaving behind the, the, the traditional ecological knowledge they were custodian of, um, leaving behind almost uh, nothing. So, um, but nowadays, most of the natural ecosystems have uh, pretty much disappeared. Um, as you can see, uh, for those who visit Rwanda, the agriculture has, 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 uh, has uh, gone far and has converted even some of the riparian, natural riparian buffers along rivers into agriculture and the natural habitat has been really lost. Um, uh, it was refound, which is a good news. Now we are, we have new um, uh, restoration efforts um, um, that are supported by the Rwandan policy in public health, uh, which supports the restoration of traditional knowledge and traditional medicine. Um, 
There is also a research going on on traditional knowledge. Um, and also, most interestingly, with the, 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 uh, the eruption of the pandemic COVID-19, um, the sleeping traditional ecological knowledge um, resurrected as the first aid result to combat the COVID-19. Uh, increasing poverty among communities, lack of time for medical processes, costly medication and associated dietary requirements, time and money cost for transportation to clinics, for example, treatment cost for livestock, human and even crops have forced the, the most of the community, um, most of which are poor, of course, to resort to less costly uh, uh, means, uh, which are, the, of course, the traditional medicine. This was also another factor that, uh, that, that, that encouraged um, people to resort back to the traditional medicine, which is of course fostered by the traditional ecological knowledge. Um, just to give you a quick outlook is that agroforestry um, is now, uh, has turned the attention of the researchers uh, for a restoration, particularly with focus on, um, particularly with focus on native species and traps for um, social, social and ecological outcomes. Um, but, because of the incre ever increasing population um, uh, in Rwanda, the farm size per household is dwindling to such an extent that the integration of native spe tree species, for example, into crop plants is being more and more difficult. Therefore, there is a critical need for incentives to maintain uh, farmers' expectations on their land in terms of uh, uh, income, uh, generated from their farms. Um, so piecing together um, the remnant of the traditional ecological knowledge through shared experiment and in particularly through knowledge exchange at the local level among uh, elders, among the youth, um, will contribute to catalyze the rebuilding of the traditional ecological knowledge, not only at the local level, but also at the, finally at the national level and why not at the regional level? So uh, thank you very much for your attention. I would like to hand over to the next presenter. Thank you. Hi, um, do you hear me? Sorry. Um, um, my name is TB and uh, I am talking um, from this point where you, what you see Dimash in uh, Eastern Transylvania. Now I am here and uh, have, have a little, um, a little, uh, not so good uh, internet connection. Thank you, Jan, for organizing uh, this uh, uh, conversation. Uh, Transylvania is considered across you uh, in a European level as a kind of biocultural refugia, uh, an area where where traditional knowledge and uh, land use practices maintain the true, uh, truly high biodiversity hotspots, and um, and um, a lot of research uh, was made, especially by our colleagues um, from Hungary, uh, Jolt Molnar, Baba Daniel, and uh, their team uh, to assess what these people know about uh, plants, uh, animals, uh, practices. Uh, and um, so next slides, uh, this slide, sorry, is uh, presenting uh, some of the results, possibly you read already the numbers. Uh, can you uh, you and can go back a bit? Sorry. <laughs> um, so um, um, the thing is this: that uh, in one hand their uh, knowledge is extraordinarily high, but they uh, uh, now I am I am going back to to talk with some of these people, and um, and basically a lot of people who who were high with high knowledge now are are dead, and uh, because they were older and. Uh, and in, it seems that that within just a decade, basically, the knowledge seemed to drop. But uh, I don't have data to quantify this. I am here now talking with them. And um, can can go please to the next slide? Yes, this is especially interesting uh, uh, case. We visit this area also in the next uh, two weeks, uh, where um, traditional ecological knowledge is, uh, 
is uh, very useful in uh, coexistence with bear, bears even in the town level. So people have remarkably high tolerance for bears. Imagine that you go to uh, make uh, uh, some shopping in the penny market and the bear is there after uh, seven o'clock and uh, how the children uh, from the street are going home because the bears are coming out and, uh, and uh, there are a lot of local rules which uh, should be uh, maintained uh, in order to avoid conflict and the conflicts uh, attack, physical attacks are are low or unexisting in, in this uh, town. And um, tourists cause a lot of troubles uh, to the locals because they feed the bears. Uh, a saying even appeared, the salami is the fruit of the, uh, uh, of the garbage bin. So you see the picture that uh, uh, indeed uh, we also search the, the, the garbage bins and find salami, chocolate, uh, fresh meat and so on. So the tourists uh, throw them there but uh, the locals are suffering the consequences of uh, the habituated bears. This is the case when, um, in one hand, the traditional knowledge is useful to maintain and tolerance to maintain somehow um, healthy uh, at healthy acceptable level. Sorry, the, the conflicts. But because of the outside inputs, the bears become more and more habituated, and uh, and <laughs> this uh, this is like a bomb which will explode. Next uh, slide, please. This um, this is a uh, in a Choklovina area, a very strange way of making hay. Uh, people train the trees and put the hay on the trees because they don't bring the hay home. So the hay should be uh, protected from wildlife and as well from, um, from the humidity of the soil. And uh, based on what, and you see that they developed tools, they trained the trees and so on. But uh, interviews with few of them suggest that in the next decade, uh, this knowledge will be lost. And everywhere in the landscape, we see the abandoned trees, how they become rewilded because nobody is taking care. It's not worth anymore to do that. And, um, and that's it. So it, it is a biocultural heritage and treasure, but, uh, but it will not persist, it seems. Uh, ne next slide, please. Um, so we had a, an in-detail study, not on the traditional ecological knowledge, but rather the practices which maintained huge uh, biodiversity of farming landscapes in, a, in the central part of Romania. And um, uh, research showed that generally, uh, the biodiversity is high and, and, and across the whole region. And, um, and this is true for multiple taxa. Can, can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, this is a, 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 a sorry. Yes, um, the reliance uh, on, of people from, from ecosystem services when we did the research was very high. Now is changing because, uh, because of the infrastructure is, uh, is decoupling people and they are have now water uh, access from pipeline and gas and so on. But in the remote villages is still be. Uh, our colleague uh, Frida showed that uh, when asking what should be the priorities for development, uh, jobs, more jobs with any price, uh, this uh, high desperation because of the poverty uh, pose some vulnerabilities on the local uh, communities because the corrupt system can establish uh, certain types of uh, initiatives, uh, which it seems that they don't bring the, the, the aspired rewards in financial terms, but uh, the consequences can be high. But people some be, may be so desperate in their poverty that, uh, that they don't realize that uh, is not necessarily only the job which is important, but also the conditions uh, and the impact on the environment. Yes. And this is an Andras uh, study, uh, just one profile of people. Uh, she, she used Q method to understand uh, how farmers uh, uh, and rural people see the landscapes and the dominant group came out, the people who wish to um, uh, gain uh, intensive uh, farming system in the area. And uh, uh, these people came from the traditional uh, community, basically. So, um, and, and some quotes uh, from them, you can see that, uh, that how, how the technology is, uh, is somehow 
uh, adopted and desired. And uh, interestingly, that I don't want to suggest that uh, that technology is bad or intensification is bad. It's just that uh, we face the change uh, or the drop of the biodiversity in in some uh, uh, landscapes, despite that still there is high local ecological knowledge and uh, the knowledge of practices uh, is there. But uh, but being not rewarding, people don't uh, uh, want to continue. And uh, one guy. He here in, in Eastern Carpathian stalled, uh, and which is true for, according to him, for many people like him, they want two things. One, uh, money, but importantly, they want recognition from the society for what the lifestyle they have. Uh, so the meaning seemed to be even more important based on just a few talks we had than the money, the financial reward itself. And uh, th this is what they don't really receive in these small rural communities. Everybody is looking to them like poor people because you still use horse, your hand to work, so you are poor. Even the politicians are often making uh, ironic type of, uh, uh, how to say, uh, speaks like uh, Transylvania and Romania is the zoo of Europe uh, trying to push uh, the, the vision toward modern development. So it's not necessarily, it's not, not easy to, to do traditional farming in Romania in this moment, because nothing is favoring it, basically. Yes, uh, the next slide, please. So um, in our uh, little uh, paper, we end up with invitation uh, for uh, research on uh, using leverage points a framework to understand the traditional ecological knowledge conundrum. So uh, the first hypothesis is that the different leverage realms what Ian presented may be mismatched or even in conflict. So a lot of people uh, would like to, uh, at, at metaphysical level, to stay here, but uh, being poor, they go, for example, in Germany, they try to make their little room uh, as familiar as uh, they can, for example, uh, with uh, cultural elements from home. Uh, their heart is at home, but the money comes from and stability from the West. Uh, so they are in this mismatch. It's not so simple that they go there and uh, all the roots are, are broken. It's like the doors of the paradise. Uh, they are closed forever. We cannot open them anymore. Uh, the hypothesis too, um, the externally imposed rules and paradigms, uh, uh, the cap uh, or other institutions which make rules and don't consider the local knowledge are not favorizing the persistence of this knowledge. The corrupt intentionality, I think uh, here in Eastern Europe, we are uh, in the land of corruption and the cultural delusion where most many people move from towns, so from cities to, to the villages and they don't really take part in the, in the transmission and making the traditional knowledge living, but they benefit after it or even are bothered by this knowledge and want to uh, cancel it. So this can be some hypothesis, which, uh, which of course, uh, uh, in, in various detail are already documented in the literature, but using a leverage point, point framework, uh, they may help uh, a better understanding of the complexity of traditional ecological knowledge. Thank you. Jörn, please. <laughs> Okay, um, thank you very much, TB, um, and of course, William and Gilmer, who spoke before TB, um, for this little overview, which maybe just serves as a sort of conversation starter for us to now have a bit of a more in-depth discussion about what it might mean to, um, to deal with these different situations of having either a live traditional ecological knowledge or remnant traditional ecological knowledge re-emerging traditional ecological knowledge or perhaps even lost traditional ecological knowledge. And what I'd like to do next is to um, get us into some breakout rooms um, for 15 minutes um, on these four states of traditional ecological knowledge, alive, remnant, re-emerging and lost. Um, you can self-select which room you'd like to join. And the idea is um, that within the rooms, um, so William will be in the re-emerging room, TB will be in the remnant room, I'll have the lost room, and um, the alive room will be Gilma um, moderating. And what we're going to try to do is to identify what are some of the key research priorities um, for each stage of traditional ecological knowledge, alive, remnant, re-emerging, or entirely lost. 
So I'll invite you um, to join those breakout rooms now, and then we'll meet back here in the plenary session in 15 minutes.